The universe is a vast and endless pool of secrets. Scientists have been trying their best to reveal these mysteries using their knowledge and modern technology. From the farthest ends of outer space to the very core of the Earth, scientists have made their way to places our ancestors couldn't have imagined. Every one of us has wondered what lies in the deepest parts of our planet and how low we can actually go. This is a challenge taken up by experts in the last five decades. They've been trying to drill a hole that goes deeper than any other. The goal is to eventually reach the Earth's mantle that constitutes 40% or probably more of the planet. The Earth has a radius of around 4,000 miles and the mantle is almost 1,800 miles thick. Believe it or not, the mantle is the major engine powering the constant evolution of our planet. It contains the geological record of most of Earth's history. The Kola Super Deep Borehole, a Soviet engineering project that occurred from the late 1960s to the early 1990s, is the deepest artificially created hole on Earth. Some of the rocks they drilled through contained ancient fossil plankton. The SG-3 is the project of the Soviet Union in the Pechensky district, near the Russian border with Norway, on the Kola Peninsula. The project attempted to drill as deep as possible into the Earth's crust. Drilling began on the 24th of May 1970, using the Uralmarsh 4E, and later the Uralmarsh 15000 series drilling rig, and it became the deepest man-made hole in history in 1979. The 23 centimeters diameter boreholes were drilled by branching from a central hole. The deepest reached 12,262 meters in 1989. The deepest human-made hole on Earth, and remains so as of 2023. In terms of true vertical depth, it remains the deepest borehole in the world. For two decades, it was also the world's longest borehole in terms of measured depth along the wellbore until it was surpassed in 2008 by the 12,289 meters long Al Shaheen oil well in Qatar. On the 6th of June 1979, the world depth record held by the Bertha Rogers Hole in Washita County, Oklahoma, United States, at 9,583 meters was broken. In October 1982, the first hole reached 11,662 meters, and the second hole was started in January 1983 from a 9,300 meters depth of the first hole. In 1983, the drill passed 12,000 meters in the second hole, and drilling was stopped for about a year for numerous scientific and celebratory visits to the site. This idle period may have contributed to a breakdown after drilling resumed. On the 27th of September 1984, after drilling to 12,066 meters, a 5,000 millimeters section of the drill string twisted off and was left in the hole. Drilling was restarted in September 1986, 7,000 meters from the first hole. The third hole reached 12,262 meters in 1989. In that year, the hole depth was expected to reach 13,500 meters by the end of 1990 and 15,000 meters by 1993. In June 1990, a breakdown occurred in the third hole at 12,262 meters of depth. The drilling of the fourth hole was started in January 1991 from 9,653 meters of depth of third hole. The drilling of the fourth hole was stopped in April 1992 at 11,882 meters of depth. Drilling of the fifth hole started in April 1994 from 8,278 meters of depth of the third hole. Drilling was stopped in August 1994 at 8,578 meters of depth due to lack of funds and the well itself was mothballed. During the drilling process, unexpectedly, no basaltic layers were found at 7 kilometers down or at any depth in the borehole. Prior to that, geological information about the Earth's crust was mostly based on analyzing seismic waves that indicated discontinuity. Scientific models had previously suggested that basalt should be seen. Instead, the actual geological evidence from the borehole revealed that there were more granites, and at much greater depths than scientists had considered. It was then thought by scientists that seismic discontinuity was caused by granite metamorphosis instead of basalts. In addition to this, water was unexpectedly found at 3 to 6 kilometers deep. Water was not naturally vaporizing at any depth in the borehole. Instead, water was found at these greater depths. Scientific models had previously not predicted water to be found at such great depths. It was discovered that deep granites can be fractured and receive water this deep. As a result of these findings, many scientists now theorize that aquifers of water can be found at much greater depths than older scientific models had previously thought possible. The drill site was officially shut down and the hole sealed in 2005. The drilling was terminated due to a lack of funds. 
The scientific team was transferred to the federal state unitary subsidiary enterprise Kola Superdeep, reduced and reoriented to a thorough study of the exposed section. In 2007, the scientific team was dissolved and the equipment was transferred to a private company and partially liquidated. In 2008, the company was liquidated due to unprofitability, and the site was abandoned. The site is still visited by curious sightseers, who have reported that the structure over the borehole has been partially destroyed or removed. Other attempts have been made through the years by other countries, including Germany, Austria and Sweden. None of those holes are deeper than the Kola Superdeep borehole, though some were longer, having veered off their vertical courses. Scientists discovered a lot from the Kola Superdeep borehole. For starters, they realized they needed to update the temperature map for the Earth's interior, since they encountered temperatures much higher than expected. They were also blown away that there was no transition from granite to basalt, a boundary geologists call Conrad discontinuity, that was reasoned to exist based on results of seismic reflection surveys. Another discovery was liquid water far deeper than they had previously thought could exist. One of the expected results was certainly the occurrence of open saline water-filled cracks documenting that the crust is not dense, but that pathways exist, allowing fluids to flow. Harms says researchers suspected that the water may have been squeezed out of the rock crystals by the incredibly high pressure within Earth. Even more exciting was the discovery of biological activity in the rocks. At 4.4 miles deep, researchers found dozens of fossils from single-celled marine organisms dating back 2 billion years. The clearest evidence were microscopic fossils encased in organic compounds that were surprisingly intact despite the extreme pressures and temperatures of the surrounding rock. If the question is, can we dig deeper, then yes, eventually. But Harms says, digging deeper than 12 kilometers depends on two critical factors, temperature and borehole stability, the latter being dependent on stress, strain and drilling fluid composition, and weight. That will take some pretty technologically advanced equipment, considering temperatures there are predicted to be as high as 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The real pie in the sky, or rather in Earth, would be reaching Earth's mantle, the layer that begins just past Earth's crust, about 25 miles below our feet. We can learn a lot about the mantle if we get access through drilling, Harms says. Earth scientists want access to the real in situ mantle to understand the nature of this boundary that is still debated and from which we have no fresh samples that contain information on how the crust and mantle interact, how fluids and magma droplets escape from the mantle into the crust and ultimately into our hydrosphere, and how they feed the biosphere, or how matter escapes back into the mantle. These grand circles of how our planet evolves remain enigmatic along this boundary, and the Moho discontinuity, the boundary between Earth's crust and the mantle, is therefore a prime objective of scientific.